It's collab time. We got a special guest on the channel. We're going to break it down for you. Super pumped. Let's jump into it. What's up, guys? MTG Jedi here. How you doing this morning? We got my dude Tairaku on the channel for the first time. How you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me on MTG. I appreciate it. This is actually my very first time ever being on somebody else's channel. So definitely excited and looking forward to this. Wow, I'm blessed and honored that you uh, you hooked up with me here for your very first collab. That's amazing. And we are super pumped to talk about Demon Spawn today. Before we get into that, um, you got anything cool going on on your channel that we want to tell everybody about? Because they're all going to go sub to you. They're all going to go click over on those links I'll have down in a pinned comment there for you and go awesome. check out your channel. So what do you got going on over there? All right, so as of right now, I've been doing a lot of live arena stuff, and uh, maybe next week sometime we'll get you on my channel to do some live arena content, which should be very exciting, so definitely want to check that out. But other than that, it's really just been a lot of live arena stuff, playing around with some soloing of the hard mode dungeons. Did get a team with uh, Nishak, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just really live arena focused right now. I mean, it seems like the hot, top, the hot thing takes a lot of time, but it's been fun. It does. As soon as I can figure out how to schedule that in, I, I yeah. want to get some more live arena content over here as well. But for today, we're talking about Demon Spawn, and this is a stacked faction. Um, yes. Typically, when, when it comes up about what are the best factions in the game, this is up for debate as one of them. So we're probably mm -hmm. not going to be able to talk about every champion in the faction today, nor even all of the good ones. But we'll try to mention uh, just about as many champions as we can. Why don't you start us off here with your some of your favorite or your favorite champion in, the, in this faction? Yeah, for sure. So you're saying it's a stacked faction. It's actually crazy because i was looking through the legendaries at first i'm like okay which ones are not so great here and i'm like wait they're all pretty amazing I agree. now vassal i don't know so much about him because he's doom tower i don't got him yet so i haven't actually tested him myself right but as far as legendaries i'm like dang every single one of these are actually very usable which is crazy but as far as a champion that i love it's near and dear to me i gotta go with Fellhound. um okay not okay. so much i mean he's he's an awesome champion okay so when I first started the uh, channel, I was a huge fan of the champion training stuff. And one of the biggest, I guess, little series that kind of kicked my channel off was one of the early champion training tournaments. I think it was the Crisk one, maybe. Um, but Fellhound was my main dude during that. He did so much for me, those fast farms. But oddly enough, before even doing the fast farming stuff, which is his main calling card, like his most popular thing, the only thing I use him for nowadays, I actually used him on my very first account, which wasn't this one. For Fire Knight stuff. Um, really? I had no Cold Heart. I had a pretty limited roster, but his reflect damage on the A2 ability actually saved me. It actually allowed me to do Fire Knight. Now, the rest of his kit, I don't know if it's actually great. I mean, the block damage on one alley for one turn, if you're doing manual Fire Knight, it can be okay. But the A2 definitely let me actually get the Fire Knight shield down, let my armor group start decreasing the turn meter. I mean, it saved me. So the fast farms plus the uh, reflect damage is pretty nice. So he's a, he's a usable rare. I use them every day in campaign. Well, yeah, when I, do I, it, that is. I feel you on that. I had to use a reflect damage champion as well on my mm -hmm. first account when I was coming up through Fire Knight because I didn't same kind of situation that you were in. I don't remember who I used, but it was somebody much worse than Fellhound. Yeah, um, he, he's a great champion. I, I've used him on a lot of takeovers for Faction Wars for people because mm -hmm. um, although this is one of the best factions, it does lack... Uh, a lot of consistent healers so the fact oh, that yeah. he has the continuous heal plus the reflect damage really helps keep your team alive now obviously mm -hmm. there's some op champions that would negate that but there are plenty of accounts where they have a hard time with survivability so excellent uh -huh. call out and just you know an amazing campaign farmer the the fastest one right Oh, yeah, yeah. I think like four seconds, I think was the fastest I ever got with him, but it's normally five seconds. Yeah. The one thing I learned was like the food champions you bring alongside him change that run time. So like Diabolist run faster than some of the other champions in the game because they have slower moving animations. Yeah. I was really trying to min-max that when I was doing the uh, champion training, training stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I'm going to call out a legendary champion here because... Um, he was my very first legendary I ever got out of a shard in Raid Shadow Legends. I used him before he was buffed, when he was still bad. He was still good, but he was bad. 
And mm-hmm. he is obviously my most powerful champion on my account, and that is going to be Kandrafon. Oh, man. Yep. So this guy, I'm sure everybody is aware of Kandrafon, but sometimes when I log into people's accounts, I still see him sitting in the vault. So we mm-hmm. definitely got to call him out. Um, his A1, one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game, is A2, another extremely hard hitting uh, ability. And then he can get an A1 after that if he kills somebody. His passive, I feel, is still underrated because Agreed, people 100%. just people just don't, you know, they, they always pair him with Duchess or another mm-hmm. Veil champion. And so you don't even need that because he puts that Veil on himself. He boosts the turn meter. So, so many good things that he can do. And in the right situations, his A3 is ridiculous. But most yeah. of the time, like you want to turn that off if you're putting him on arena defense. Um, and a lot of times you do skip it just because you're trying to do more damage. But one of the best damage dealers in the game, I think his value's gone up uh, since live arenas come come on. So yes, just a really amazing champion. Yeah, 100%. You're talking about A3 being super valuable. And uh-huh. I've noticed a ton of value from that in live arena, actually, because I'll pick... Seafy and Duchess a lot of times. Well, they ban my Duchess, and now I have no increased attack. Well, yeah. Kandafon still has increased attack because of that A3. I mean, C- but he, he hits so much harder, of course, with increased attack like yeah. any champion would. But yeah, that passive, the passive is crazy. Like, mm-hmm. more damage, takes less damage, and the turn meter boosting. I kind of forgot about the turn meter boosting, honestly. Yeah. I think I'm going to slow my Kandafon down, yeah. make him hit a little bit harder, because that actually is quite a bit of term you're boosting if they're ever hitting is you have to really think about this passive when you're building your candrafon teams because Mm -hmm. that is a it's a really significant turn meter boost so what i actually did recently was i sped up all of my live arena nukers while trying to improve their damage stats which of course was very difficult um, oh, but yeah. now I have to go through and adjust all the speeds on my support champions to make sure he doesn't like leap over them in the turn yep. order. Yep, definitely. Uh, Who else you want to call out here that, that you uh, enjoy using from this faction? All right, so another champion who I enjoy using. So I'm going to do we'll do another little bit of an underrated one, I guess. Okay, um, yeah. But I do enjoy using him um, a, a lot. That's Skimfos. Um the Void Epic mm-hmm. Skimphos. So this is a champion who I did a video not too long ago about um, a Fire Knight team because I think it was on Sage 24. It was the it was Sage that allures weak affinity. So I wasn't using Allure. Needed some turn meter reduction, turn meter manipulation champion. And Skimphos's kit is actually great. Mm-hmm. So on the waves, on his A2 ability, he has a decreased attack, which I usually clear the waves in one shot. But if I don't, that can help mitigate some of the damage. Right. But more importantly than that... His A1 has a chance on the second hit, which is un- unfortunate. It's only on the second hit. Um, actually, no, I think it's the first hit. The first hit, 35% chance of placing the decreased speed, books up to a 45%. So it's unfortunate that it doesn't always place it. Yeah. But having that decreased speed on that first hit and then a turn meter decrease on that second hit is very useful, as you can imagine, on Fire Knight. Yeah. But that A3 is just so, so good. So the transfer is all debuffs part. You don't really get to use that in actual Fire Knight too much, ideally, if the Fire Knight's not hitting you. But the steals 100% of the target's turn meter, if the stack is critical, I mean, just build him with crit, mm-hmm. he can hit decent, so his A2 ability is going to help you clear those waves a little bit better. But that's not just a reduce the enemy's turn meter, that's a steals the enemy's yeah. turn meter, which I think a lot of people overlook. This is on a three-turn cooldown. So if the Fire Knight has a lot of turn meter, granted on stages 24, 25, you're not going to be able to steal all of it, but you're stealing a lot of it, so you're mm. stealing a bunch of it, you're getting another turn, it's a low-turn cooldown as it is, so if you bring another turn meter decrease champion, you can really do a lot of great stuff with Skimfo. So That's I'm definitely cool. a big fan of him, specifically for Fire Knight. I wonder if his A1 would be more consistent with like an ally attack champion. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, what does this pass him do? I think I did have him in some uh, some revenge accessories. Okay. But that doesn't always actually help that much. It depends yeah. on who else you have in the team, of course, because you may not even break the shield, but... Could be but, interesting oh yeah, to try him against the hard dragon as well with the transferring all the debuffs. If you yeah, could keep him actually, alive. Yeah, man, that is a low cooldown. So by the time the dragon got to do that, he'd be ready to do this again. Yeah. So yeah, because I mean, you, you know, champions like Stoutus are amazing, but mm-hmm. he does it automatically reflects right. everything back. Right. So yeah, great yeah, call out there. Super underrated champion, definitely sitting in a lot of people's vaults. 
Um, another epic champion that I love, that I use all the time, that I have to call out is going to be Magnar. Because oh, I, yeah. so, I always say... I think that Magnar is better than the nukers most people are using on their accounts. Like, unless you have a top-tier nuker, you know, Trunda, Baron, um, even even Magnar can be better than Hefrax sometimes, depending on your gear. So, like, mm -hmm. all of these top-tier nukers are still going to be a little bit better than him. But for most people, with the gear that they have, you can build a Magnar better. And... There's no increase HP, so you can throw him in any team you want to. Yeah. One thing I ran into in the last takeover I did was somebody wanted to build him with accuracy to try to get the, like, decreased defense, like, mm. debuff spread stuff, and that led him to obviously doing a lot less damage. So I just wanted to remind people, I don't recommend building Magnar with any accuracy. If mm -hmm. you happen to hit the decreased defense on the A1 once in a while, fine. But the whole goal of his kit is the double hitter on the AoE A2. So if you're having HP burn out there, that's a bad thing. You do not want yep. those HP burns. You want that double hit. And it's very easy to build a team where you're getting that double hit. So... I love Magnar. I use him all the time. Um, I have a video coming out. It's, it'll probably be out, actually, by the time this comes out. Um, so that you should go check that out, where we talk about Samson and Magnar. And that mm, was a really enlightening video for me, because I thought Samson was going to be just clearly better than Magnar. And Magnar yeah. definitely holding his own in that video. So um, I love that champion. He's super, super good. Oh yeah, actually, mine's not geared right now. I need to get him rebuilt because he is he is so good, and he is especially a champion who's good when people are pushing up through arena. Because like you said, I mean, there's no there's no decreased HP. De right. Well, not really. There's no decreased HP debuff in the game, yeah. so he can't really be reduced in his damage. But he also you know survives so well because he's yes. an HP based champion. Yep. So he's like survivable, hits super hard. Yeah, super super awesome champion. I yeah. agree. Yeah, for sure. All right, so let's jump into, um, are there any champions in this faction that are a trap that seem good, and then when you build them, it's just like, wow, I feel like I completely wasted my resources here, whether that's for faction wars or other content. Are there any champions you feel like we need to avoid because they're misleading? Um, there's a champion who you get for free who's just terrible. I'm not for <laughs> sure if he's even that much of a trap being Scion. Yeah. Um, I'm not for sure. That's the, the thing is with him is by the time you get him for free in game, I think you know better than to build him. Yeah. But if somebody get him brand new, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Because he, he's a block active. It's like, okay, this is the first time you get a, or not a ton of champions have block active. So maybe as a new player, you might think, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, but it's a single target block active. Low chance to actually place it, 30% chance. Mm -hmm. It's A2, single target once again. Place the heal reduction. I mean, I guess if you really need a block buffs and a heal reduction, yes. <laughs> actually, no, don't, don't even do it then. Don't even do it then. And his A3 removes everything, then attacks all enemies. And I yeah. mean, he's just a, a very selfish champion yeah. who doesn't really bring that much. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just like, why do we even get this champion for free? Right. Like, like I said, by the time you get him, you shouldn't be baited into it. But if you pull him sooner, maybe you would be. Yeah. I wish he was good, but he's definitely not, and I totally yeah. agree with you. I think the biggest trap in this faction is Soul Drinker. Okay, I could definitely see that. I think that Soul Drinker, you have to have busted gear on a busted account for him to be decent. And if that's not the case, which is obviously for most people, he's just so misleading. I wanted this guy yeah. to be good so bad. You know, with when he dies, you place the bombs. I but I could never get him to work. I know that there's mm -hmm. been a lot of videos out there on him, but I think the majority of players are not going to be able to make this guy work. And I feel like unless he's your only option, I would avoid it. But with so many good options in the rare category that we're going to talk about, I don't see why you would need this guy. <laughs> I really don't. And so yeah. I, I try to avoid him at all costs. I 100% agree. He is a different, difficult champion to work with. Yeah, he's, he's difficult to build. Yeah. I've, actually, I've also seen people start to build him. I'm like, he's not really going to get much use at this point, honestly. Yeah. 
I mean, I think that there's champions that are underwhelming, especially yeah. in the epic category, like Excruciator, Aranus, Nizana. Some some people always are like, oh, Nizana is so underrated. I still don't get it. Um, I agree. And I like, think, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think her kit was good a while back. Yeah. But now, I mean, the AoE A1, maybe nice. for stun set, but I think there's better champions, more champions for that. Right. I mean, the, what she brings, I feel like a lot of champions bring the same thing or even yeah. better. Yeah. The AoE decrease attack. I mean, you have other options. It's just years ago, maybe, but yeah. nowadays, I feel like she just doesn't bring enough. Right. I don't know. A little right. underwhelming, like you said. Yeah, I totally agree. All right. So, what champions do you think that we're going to rely on then for a lot of our faction war teams? And then we'll hit on a little bit on all the legendaries later because since they, they are so good, you know, you, you can't go wrong with building any of these legendaries. So yeah, 100%. as far as epics or rares go, what are the ones that you think we're going to rely on uh, for Faction Wars a lot of times? Yeah, so there are a few rare champions I definitely want to mention. But good. one of the epics, specifically Dur the Hungerer, mm -hmm. is a champion who I, I guess maybe fortunately... Unfortunately or unfortunately, didn't get to use him because I had Duchess. Okay. But if you don't have Duchess, this guy could be a pretty awesome option. Yeah. I mean, it's a, re a revive. His A3 is a revive, which is so, so valuable to have in Faction Wars. Any faction, and even, even though it's only two random allies, mm -hmm. you probably shouldn't have a ton of people dying during your Faction War runs anyways. No. Four-turn cooldown when fully booked. So the revive is amazing by itself. The A2, reflect damage. We have some continuous heal. Anytime you can get some support champion in Faction Wars, I found I find pretty big value in that mm -hmm. because it's just really about not the time getting through it on a lot of this stuff. It's about actually getting through the stage, getting the three star from it, and then moving on to the next one. And you can build the auto farm teams down the road. He's probably not going to be a part of most auto farm teams, no. but he could be a part of getting you through it in those initial stages for 100%, sure. 100%, yeah, yeah. Now, when you build this type of champion, do you like to include some accuracy, if possible, to try to get the stuns on the A1? Yeah, so if I was if I was building Dur, it would really depend on the person's account. Um, the stuns on the A1 is great. I mean, it's a 30% chance, book it up to 40%, which is actually a pretty decent chance. It's a single mm -hmm. target, but that could definitely make the difference in Faction Wars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. If somebody could get the gear, which, I mean, you have Perception, that's going to help you get the accuracy mm -hmm. requirement very easily for Faction Wars especially, I would definitely... Maybe some perception plus immortal. If you had some decent stuff from Clan yeah. Boss, giving you the extra heal, making him tanky, that'd be the number one priority. Making him tanky, and then if I could get some accuracy, one hundred percent, I think it'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. My my goal is always over fifty k HP for anyone important, mm -hmm. um, higher if possible, and then try to get them over two hundred speed if possible. Also, uh, and lastly, he does come with some base resistance. And with the boss, I believe this is the one that puts all those debuffs on you, like freezing you and mm. fearing you and all that stuff. So if you can put resistance on here, that's going to help protect your team a lot and sometimes more than what the accuracy can do on the A1. So yeah. resistance, if possible, on these champions is actually really good here. Um mm -hmm. I guess I'll mention Allure here because not okay. only is she amazing in like a million areas of the game, but she's also really, really good on 21 to clear this. There have been a yeah. lot of times where I used one or even two copies of Allure to stop the boss from taking a turn. And again, you, you a lot of times you want to put resistance and accuracy on her. So her build's a little bit different if you're going for that strategy. But you can still just use her in your normal gear, you know? And then if she gets yeah. frozen, she gets frozen. This boss mm -hmm. is not that difficult. Uh, it's more annoying than anything. But sometimes that boss that's shutting you down so many times is going to lead to you losing. So Allure is an amazing champion for Fire Knight, Doom Tower stuff. We we see a lot of her, obviously. But not a lot of people mention her as being good in Faction Wars, which she definitely is. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Which is kind of interesting because the second the, cha the champion I was going to talk about next mm -hmm. is actually a, a champion who I've seen somebody run a team with just Diabolist and Allure. A couple of them. There's okay. a few. I think it was a few Diabolist and a couple of Allure, which is not something I recommend by no means. Right, The person exactly. had a limited count for other options. Um, it's a very, very slow run. Diabolist is a champion who, if you need what she brings, she's awesome. I mean, early game, you may use her in the arena. Later on, Faction Wars, she can be pretty good. I mean, the A3 
fills the turn meter of your allies and decreases the turn meter of enemies. So you have a turn meter boost plus a turn meter decrease. Four turn cooldown when fully booked. She's a rare champion, so she's going to be super easy to book. Mm -hmm. And then her A2 is an increased speed for two turns. I mean, it's also three turn cooldown. So she has pretty fast cooldowns. It's an AoE ability. So if you really wanted to get a little extra utility, you could throw on a stun set. You could throw on, I wouldn't say provoke. She'd probably die after she gets hit. I agree. Um, she has decent base HP, honestly, looking at it. Yeah, it's The not base bad. defense bad. is a little bit low. Yeah. Um, but if you need the increased speed, if you need some turn meter manipulation, and you're really struggling getting those stats, she could definitely be a champion worth looking into. Um, your gear would probably determine if you need to take her to 60. I really wouldn't want to take a Diablo to 60, I don't think. Um, but 50, if you can make her tanky enough, that's my thing with a lot of the support champions is if you can make them tanky enough, leave them at 50. Yeah. I mean, damage dealers, I prefer to get to 60 so they can get the tier 6, War Master, Giant Slayer, whatever it may be. Yeah. But for support, 50, that's usually fine. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of usable rare champions here. Um, oh, we yeah. have the, the the Hound combo here that is, that's great, but... Obviously, yeah. they're best if you six star at least the Hound Spawn, who's the damage dealer. I think a lot yeah. of people are going to skip this, but it's really good early on because they're both easy to get. Like, you could really have a team early game that's like Diabolist, Bellhound, the other two hounds, and mm -hmm. Marques. Like, you could have an all rare team if you don't have any epics and still make a lot of good progress. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Speaking of Marques, like she's still one of the best damage dealers in the game. Uh, yeah. I, I was, was going to uh, ask about that because I know you did a video on her. I did. Yeah, back. I was actually the first content creator to cover her, yeah. and it was a it, it was a really good video uh, for the channel. I feel like that yeah. was one of my big catalysts on YouTube because her AOE, if they have a weekend again, has that double hitter just like Magnar does. Um, mm -hmm. she's really good if you can pair her with an increased defense champion, which there are not many of, um, yeah. but, but she's really, really good still. It's hard to get her base defense up. So, but she still does really good damage. Should and some actually, of the other rares are good too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Abyssal champion. I haven't really played with much, but seemed interesting. Have you played with him much? Yeah, so he kind of fills that role, uh, the Fellhound role, with like the little bit uh -huh. of heal, little bit of okay. support. Um, he does have increased defense, increased attack, but a lot of times you end up skipping that uh, yeah, because you're just sense. trying to get the heals or the block buffs on the on the A1. Um, he has the, the speed aura for faction crypts as well. So he's just okay. like a good little champion. Another champion you can keep at 50 if mm -hmm. you need a healer, you know, if you need yeah, some kind sense. of heals, you're going to choose either him or Falhound. You wouldn't want both in the same team, though. Yeah, maybe throw him in a stun set if you had it. Correct. For that AoE A1 mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I definitely so, thought he had potential. I just never needed needed to actually play him. Yeah, I used him uh, for a couple different things early on. But now yeah. that there's so many more epics up here, a lot of times you don't so need many. that. Yeah. Because yeah. like Tanix is kind of hard to use as a healer. I don't like mm -hmm. relying on her as a healer, but she can do the job. But once Achak got added, you know, Dur got added, if you have those champions, you're going to use them. And if oh, you yeah. have any of the legendaries, you're going to use them. A lot of times... Oh, the hardest thing about this faction is determining what champions that you have to use since yeah. it's such a big faction. It is. Um, it's huge. Okay, so there's there's one or two other epics I want to mention here before we start wrapping up the video. Uh, but I yeah. want to hand it over to you to, uh, to talk about anybody else that you want to. Um, I mean, you kind of touched on a lot of them. Achak. Um, Akoth is a super, super good epic. So, so good. He's an epic that you get for free from the Doom Tower. 100% should be building him. Uh, well, I can't necessarily say that because some people may have some better options for burners. But whenever the normal spider was the only thing you could do, mm -hmm. he was so incredible for the spider. Awesome champion, the HP burn. I had him doing some solo content. I think I had him soloing Spider Stage 20 as wow. well. For sure, duoing with Archmage. So mm -hmm. two free champions for the Doom Tower, which was super cool. Um, but yeah, Akoth, awesome champion, the AoE HP burn, which... The one thing you got to be careful with 
is that it's a chance that increases based on the enemies that are alive. Yeah. So if you try to bring him against one boss, <laughs> you're never going to land the HP know, burn. Yeah. One day I thought, you know, maybe he can solo drag him mm -hmm. or kind of do some work here. Yeah, no. He's never going to land the HP burn. He's just going to die. So yeah. in Spider, he's amazing. I tried Ice Golem. Ice Golem too, yep. Yeah, Ice Golem. It's a place that you think he would be amazing because right. HP burn is so good. Right. But it's only a 60% chance to place it. And mm -hmm. it's like, dang. It just feels so bad getting back to it. But still, I think he is an awesome champion. No, totally agree. Totally agree. I guess the last epic that I really want to touch on here is going to be Umbral Enchantress. Oh, I yes. feel like one of the things this faction lacks is control. And mm -hmm. we have to deal with those Valkyrie ra waves, right? Am I remembering that right? I'm uh, pretty sure. I think so. I'm also... Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm well, pretty sure yeah. on the boss stage, the Valkyrie waves are the hard part and not the boss, but it might be stage mm -hmm. 20. Either way, Umbral Enchantress provides everything that you need all, all, yes. all in her kit to deal with the Valkyrie waves because she has the AoE Provoke, mm -hmm. and then obviously she you know does some bad things to herself with the block active skills. But if you lead with the A2 on the block buffs, and then you follow that up with the AoE Provoke, you just basically shut down that Valkyrie wave, and you mm -hmm. just let the rest of your team do the work. And she does good yeah. damage, too. You can build her for damage. She's got good multipliers. Her she base does. defense really is, is really solid. So yeah. I think that this is, at this point in the game, I want to say she's a little bit underrated now. Because there's I, so many other champions. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think she's also underrated. She hits hard. Yeah. With that A3, though, there's a little bit of a trick to it. I don't know if you know about this. Okay. But if you put her in stone skin, mm. she does that, and she won't place the block actives on her skill on her for that first time. So you can actually go from block actives, the AoE provoke. Not, there's no block actives on her. You can do the AoE provoke and then do the A2 block buffs, which is super cool. Yeah. Used to, you could cleanse that. Oh, then they okay. fixed it, they fixed and it, you yeah. couldn't do it no more. Yeah. But Stone Skin right now prevents her from... I think you only need the four pieces. Mm. So right now, it prevents her from having that first turn of block actives, which, you said, for Faction Wars, could be great. Yeah. You can go into the Provoke, and then you can use the A2 soon after. No, I love that. I have yet to use that trick. I'm going to definitely keep yeah. that in mind. If you guys are trying to beat this faction and you have her, totally recommend that. That sounds awesome, and I think it will work really well. Yeah, and her, her provoke is also two turns. It is, which is it is, which very few champions have actually. Right. Other than just, Molly, I, I was going to say her and does. Molly. There's uh, and there's the one Doom random. Tower champion, I think. Okay. Yeah, but it's not a champion anybody's going to get probably. Yeah. All right, so real quick, let's briefly talk about uh, each of the legendaries. Um, let's just go back and forth. You want to start with Kaimar, or you want, or you want Tyrant? We'll just go every um, other one. I can do Tyrant. All right. So Kaimar is like, obviously, you're going to include him in any team that you have, regardless of if it's Faction Wars, Arena, Doom Tower, you know, resetting the skills, stripping them. He's just absolutely amazing. 100%. And Tyrant, he uh, awesome champion. I've used him in some solo content. Great champion for um, Spider, as well as Ice Golem. Um, Ice Golem, even probably hard, I imagine he'd do great as well. Um, Spider, not no, not so much on hard, but on normal, he's great, awesome champion. I use even used him on the Griffin stage of the Doom Tower. So great HP burn, great sustainability, very solid champion. Yeah, Countess Licks is another amazing one. She, I feel like you kind of have to decide what damage dealers you want to use from this faction in your faction war team. A lot of times you'll have a lot of options, so you kind of got to narrow that down to your best one or two. And a lot of times she makes the cut because she has that control built in with the block active skills that can be really helpful. She has the turn meter control, the weaken on the A1, just a great champion. Oh yeah, 100% I agree. Um, Hefrak, he is a champion I think a lot of people probably know too well, especially if you go into arena not knowing what he does, and then you kill somebody, and then he kills your entire team. He yeah. is a very hard-hitting damage dealer. A um, little bit conditional, though, so you got to be mindful about that. Um, his A1, that's an easy condition to meet. It's only a place of extra hit if the attack's critical. The A2, not so much sometimes, and I've actually been saved plenty of times in the arena where he doesn't get the first hit under 50% HP, and now he doesn't do the second hit. The biggest thing with him, though, is if you build him, 
you and if you build them with say two pieces of stones or six pieces of stone skin and just don't use the a3 don't use the extra turn i right. can't tell you how many times i've seen people with two turns of the stone skin buff and they use their extra turn to buff him up yeah. and i'm like you just completely wasted yeah. that entire two pieces of stone skin yeah where you could have had anything else on him yeah but he's a super hard hitting champion a lot of people do build him with stone skin mm-hmm Drekstar, totally agree on ha- on Hefrak too, by the way. But uh, Drekstar, free champion, if you put in enough effort in 3v3. Um, he's good if you have him, like you pull him from a shard, he's still very good. You have to do a little bit of RNG if you're relying on him for the AoE provoke, because it's not 100%. But an amazing champion that you're definitely going to use. We already touched on Kandrafon, so what, what are we doing with CCO over here? So Sishia is a champion who I unfortunately don't have. Um, I would love to use her. She's in a lot of speedrun teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I've used her in some takeovers for actually the uh, the, de- the decreased defense and weekend that she places. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool on her A2. She gets a lot of attention for the placing the burns and exploding the burns, which is amazing. But she also brings some good debuffs. So she's a she's an awesome champion, great for tons of PVE content. I would use her if I had her. I would use her in Hydra. I would use her in some speedrunning spider teams. Overall, an awesome champion. I'd also find a way to use her with my Cardiel because I have Cardiel, just mm. don't have Sishia, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. She was a guaranteed champion too, I think. Yeah, yeah I think she so. was. Yeah, and I missed it. Yeah, dang. She does do the decreased defense and weaken, which this this faction is very light on those. Yeah, that's actually one reason why Allure is good because she brings the little version of decreased defense. Mm-hmm. That's um, very true. Hopping over to Wither real quick. She is one of the best healers in the game no questions asked she does healing on every ability Mm -hmm. she has the full cleanse her base stats are ridiculous and i've used her in like almost every area of the game i used her in hydra i used her in to clear the faction i i had her pretty early on on my account so she was a huge huge boost for me Mm -hmm. 100 percent. more to macabre He's a champion who procs peril 100% of the time when you're going against him and 0% of the time when you're using him. Yeah. He is a, a very good champion for yeah. some situations, but don't bring him everywhere because the big issue with me that I find with him is if I do try to bring him into live arena fights, even if against against a team with like Mighty Uko and Kaimar, mm-hmm. it's actually getting those procs of the peril. Yeah. So you can go into a match and it'd be super quick. You can proc peril, no problem. Or you could go so many turns never proc peril i mean the enemy does have to be mindful hey they can't target more to or they risk proc and peril but peril is basically going to kill people i mean yeah. majority of champions it hits it's going to kill people yeah. if you bring a udk against it it's going to change some things up but even outside that peril skill the hero reduction on the a2 but his a2 ability brings a block buffs which is very nice i mean if mm-hmm. you if you really want it one if you really needed somebody for hydra you could possibly use him for the block buffs I think there's probably better options for most players, but he does bring some more stuff outside of just that main peril skill. Yeah. Super slow in stone skins, how I have mine built, though. So okay. I only use mine for peril. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people are the same way. Yeah. And I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Lord Shazar is a really good damage dealer for this faction. Those bombs do a lot of damage. Yes. You have to be careful when he's buffing himself for, for his extra turn. Normally, that's just like, oh, yeah, do that. But when you're running him against those Valkyries, you want to skip that ability, because otherwise that might just be the end of your run. But he's he's a really good champion. The A1 triple hitter does good damage. He's still really good in this game, and if you need him, he can definitely do a lot of work. Mm-hmm. So uh, Duchess. I'm Duchess. not really sure if there's a whole lot I need to say about her. She <laughs> is... Uh... You, you pull her, you basically beat the game. I mean, yeah. if any champion could be beating the game, she could be it. She can carry you through so much stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you're gearing... If you pull her early game, you're going up several stages in everything without a doubt. I yeah. mean, as long as you have her built decent, she's going to keep your team alive. If they die, she's going to res them. Incredible, incredible champion. Yeah. And I think everybody knows that, especially with Live Arena. She is in 90% of the matches. Yep, totally agree. I think Helicath is starting to see play in a lot more areas of the game as well. People are Mm -hmm. realizing that his multipliers are not the worst. They're decent. Um, Yeah. But, you know, the block damage and the shields and stuff, like, he can easily keep your faction war team alive. There's a million clan boss teams you can build with him. He's just really, really solid. 
Um, have well, you seen yeah. uh, Have you seen an increase with uh, Crutraxa over there in Live Arena as well? Yeah. So I've actually I tried her out recently, and she's she's super good. Now I have I have Georgia, so he's probably the closest champion I could compare. I mean, she's not a Georgia level because Georgia brings so much extra to his kit. Okay. But as far as a champion who doesn't really care about UDK, who's also a pick in almost every match, especially if you use Rotos, you're going to see UDK all the time. But her A1 attacking one of me four times, that first hit's going to go to UDK, and all three of the hits after that are going to go to whoever you want. Oh. It's going to ignore 50% of the enemy's defense. Yeah. So she is hitting so hard, so hard. And if you got lucky enough to have a neck rip, then all the hits from crew tracks are going to go to whatever enemy you select so that's hitting super hard plus her a2 she gets an extra turn after using that yeah so she's using a hard hitting a2 into that quadra hit a1 mm -hmm. plus she brings revival and death on her passive i mean she has a lot of good stuff in her kit she's a very very solid champion for damage dealer especially in live arena cool in my opinion so yeah i was I, thinking I about like her. building her out and giving her yeah. a shot um i yeah, think i, think I have definitely her. Worth yeah, it. yeah I, I do right yeah yeah, throw in um, some revenge accessories. So if she gets hit, right? she's counterattacking. Terrible mistake for them. <laughs> and then she's pretty good if they're running like Warlord or Yumiko too. Yeah, exactly. Because huh. her A one can't lock that out. Right. She'll still erase people. Yeah. <laughs> like she's erased duchesses, like some crazy tanky champions. Okay. Very solid. Interesting. And Anithwi, he's still going to be good. I don't know that he's like your best option here. But like his yeah. A3 and his A2 can just like murder people in faction wars. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you don't really care about the whole block revive thing, but you know, the healing himself, that's nice. Very helpful. It's like he has built in life steal. And then, yeah. um, you know, his A1 hits pretty well too. So I feel like we've, we've covered as much as we can cover here, but are there any last, anybody else who you want to, you want to touch on or you feel like we're good? I think I have to say this one thing about Helicath, okay? Okay. So I came against the most annoying arena team ever, and maybe one of your viewers can build this, but it was double Helicath, which you can't use this in live arena once we get into gold. But before gold, you can be one of the most annoying players. Double Helicath, uh, Sifi, and Mighty Uko. I didn't realize that Helicath counterattacks when anybody places block damage. It doesn't matter. I thought it was just him, mm -hmm. but it's anybody. These two Helicaths were hitting so incredibly hard, and I could never get past the block damage. And the Sifi placed in the increased defense. It was a very solid team. Mighty Uko rezzing with the block damage. It was very. It was a very solid team, and it it beat my team. That was actually pretty good. Well, I thought it was. But I think they just you put that in a video, right? Down. I did. Yeah, I, did. I saw that, and I was like, "Bro, do I have a second Helicath that I can go build right now?" That's, that's I, the first I thing don't. I did after that match. I'm yeah. like, I have to have a second Helicath. Let me find this thing. <laughs> I was gonna rebuild my Iron Twins Fortress and everything just to try that team out. Really? It was cool. Yeah. But yeah, it was a yeah. it was a really cool team. Yeah, absolutely. He he can just be used in so many areas of the game. Yes. So, yes. Um, I'm gonna go pull up my faction war team. If you want to talk about yours, uh, we'll okay. go ahead and wrap up the video with our faction war teams, our personal ones. All right. Do you want me to go first? You yeah, said? go ahead. Okay. All right. So my faction war team is probably not a whole lot to be said about it. Honestly, it's a little bit whale heavy. Um, it is a Duchess, Kaimar, Kandrafon, Krutraxa, and Hefrak. <laughs> so the team just damage heavy. Now it was weird though because I was going through here looking at my champions and I noticed I like to switch gear around a lot. So mm -hmm. some of my champions aren't geared. Some of them are geared. So my Kandrafon, Kaimar, and Duchess stay geared majority of the time. Um, and they kind of just carry it, honestly. Yeah. For Trax and Hefrak, they fill in where they need. But yeah, it's a pretty, uh, like I said, pretty legendary heavy team. But that's what I use. Yeah, that, that's pretty similar to mine. Yeah, with the Kandrafon, Duchess, Kaimar, Cecia, and then Hefrak. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, but you don't need these level of teams. We're talking, these are no. super end game. We're trying to speed farm it. I don't even think you need Duchess in the team, to be honest. You could probably just take her out and put another damage dealer in and be perfectly fine as well. Yeah, I agree. Except outside of her increased attack. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, that's a nice to have, but definitely not needed. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that'll do it here. Let's uh, let's wrap it up. That was uh, yeah. uh, for all of you who made it all the way to the end of the video. I knew this one was going to be a long one with such a big faction, but I wanted to make sure we did a pretty thorough job covering these champions. So you get an A plus star high five. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me know in the comments below so I can give you a personal thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Make sure you go check out Tairaku's channel, and then hopefully we will have time to do a, a collab on his channel in the near future as well. Um, what do you uh, What do you want to say? Thank you so much for being here, man. This has been great. Yeah, hey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. It means a ton. Like I said, the very first collab video I've done, so it's awesome to be able to do it with you. Um, also, I realize that we're very late into this video, uh, like 30 minutes plus. So yeah, if your viewers made it to this point, it definitely deserves a like and subscribe to the channel because yeah, <laughs> that's a, it's a longer video than I expected, but yeah, Demon Spawn, Stacked Faction, and uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Go check out the rest of the playlist. We have a different uh, CC with each different faction. So go check out the rest of them. We're almost done here. Only a couple more left. And I will catch you guys in the next video.